Today I'm going to show you how to make this rustic wooden pumpkin to decorate during the fall at Halloween around Thanksgiving time. It's a great little decorative project uh, for around the home or to sell or to give as a gift. So stick around. You know why? It's going to be fun. My name is James and this is Homestyle Woodcrafts. Homestyle Woodcrafts. Since I want to make this pumpkin out of one of these fence pickets, I'm going to cut it into three pieces. Now this picket is 72 inches tall, but this top inch is dog-eared. So for my purposes, I'm not going to count that. So really, for my purposes, this picket is 71 inches tall. Now if I cut that into three pieces, each piece will be 23.66666666 inches tall. Well, I'm just going to round down because it's just easier to say 23 inches. So I'm going to have three pieces that are 23 inches tall set side by side for this project. So let's go cut them out. Now remember safety. I'm going to be protecting my lungs, my eyes, and my ears and encourage you to do the same. In order to stay safe, miter saws deserve to be treated with a healthy level of respect. So make sure you know how to use your tools safely. Now because I'm going to be trimming away everything outside of the outline, we really don't need to worry about having pinpoint accuracy on this project, which is nice. So I'm just going to mark this up real quick and we'll start cutting. Now you'll notice I have this clamp here and that is to keep the board from this side of the board from flipping up because most of the board's length is it has extended beyond the table on this saw. So this just helps me keep the board in place. So with the dimensions of my boards, I could make a pretty tall pumpkin. I don't think I'm going to do that. So I think I'm probably going to use like this much space. So it's a little rounder. The reason I'm drawing it before I attach the boards together is that will help me figure out where I can attach the boards together if I have my outline. So I am going to try make an attempt to sketch this out um, as best I can. And just remember that if you grow a pumpkin, they're not perfect. So mine's not going to be perfect either. So let's give this a try. All right, hey, that's not bad. Now I'm gonna put a stem up here. You know, it's gonna kinda of go out to the side here like pumpkin stems often do. All right, and that is clean enough that I can uh, cut it out with the jigsaw. For the back braces, I found some scrap one by twos that I'll use. And I figured if I cut them to 10 and a half inches, that will provide sufficient bracing on the back to hold the three pieces together and leave room for the jigsaw when I saw it out. If you were using a band saw, you could probably have longer braces, but the footprint of the jigsaw needs some space so i just thought i'd uh, whip these out in the miter box you'll have to excuse my hair today uh, earlier we went on a bike ride and the bike helmet messed my hair up I know that my viewers probably expect my hair to be appropriately quaffed when I film, uh, but today it just didn't work out. Sorry about that. In order to attach the brace, I'm going to be using these one inch wood screws. Now these are probably zinc plated and I don't know that they're outdoor screws, but they, it's what I had on hand. I think it will work out, um, but they're, they're not quite long enough. So I'm going to use my drill to counter sink a hole in. Uh, so that I can drop the screw just far enough so that it will provide a good grip between the two boards. The way I'm going to measure that out uh, when I drill is I put a little piece on 
tape on my drill bit and I'm just going to drill to the start of the tape. So here we go. Here I'm just marking out where I'm going to be drilling screws and where I'm going to countersink some holes. I'm going to put six screws in each, kind of two on each board. I'm going to countersink them and then I'm going to uh, pre-drill it just to help the boards not split. I'm going to mark where I have these braces placed so that as I pre-drill, if I move them around, then I'll be able to put them back where they belong. I'm just going to mark a couple of corners and then drill. Now that I've got the braces attached, the next step is to cut it out. And for that, I'm going to be using a jigsaw. You could also use a bandsaw if you wanted. Up until now, we've only seen the back of the pumpkin. But now that I've cut it out, I can show you from the front. Here it is. Looks pretty good. Here I'm using my sander just to smooth out the edges of the pumpkin. I love this sander. The next step is to paint it. And so here's my plan. I'm going to tape off the stem and paint the rest orange. And then when that's dried, I will unmask the stem and hand paint that. And my the idea I have is to give it kind of a light paint and then scuff it to give it kind of a rustic weathered look. To make it look like a pumpkin. Hey, how's it going? Good. It's all done. Got the <laughs> I got the green stem. I painted it uh, not pink. I painted it pumpkin color, orange. Now I'm going to distress it and just to add to that rustic look. I'm going to take some sandpaper to it, scuff it up. I'm going to throw stuff at it. You'll see. I'll put it on video. All right, that's as far as I'm going to take it. Before I forget, I want to tell you that I'm going to give it a protective top coat of this polyacrylic spray-on finish to protect it. Now that it is painted uh, and distressed, it's now time to figure out how to stand it up. Personally, I'll either uh, lean it up against something or I will use a scrap piece and set it up like this. Let me show you a close-up. This is how I'm going to do it, probably. Or lean it against a post or the side of the house. See, I just braced that piece of wood under that top brace. Another option you could use is take a piece of wood like this and again, put it here, but then add a hinge to make a kind of a permanent uh, support. And hey, here's one last tip for you. If you think you might make more of these pumpkins, then take the pumpkin you've made and trace it out on a piece of cardboard. That way you'll have a pattern and it will be simple to trace it on the wood instead of having to draw one each time. If you enjoyed this video, watch the next one up here. It's about how to build a wood jack-o'-lantern. And it's uh, been a pretty popular video, and it's a lot of fun to build. And so I think you'd enjoy that. Hope you enjoyed this video. It's, I've had a lot of fun doing it. Hey, what I encourage you to do is have a watch party with your friends and break out those mini tacos and make a dip for them. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.